wait, one more thing on Teen Wolf. Nice. <laughs> Um, so I was driving after we recorded our Teen Wolf episode. I was uh-huh. driving down the street and I was just suddenly hit by something. Well, not, I, was in, I was in a semi tractor trailer. And while I was recuperating in the hospital, um, I, I had a fever dream. I real, something else hit me, but mentally. Ah. Um, and this was thoughts on Teen Wolf. Yes, more One thoughts. One thing we didn't go over, and it seemed kind of obvious once I realized it, is that this movie has a weird this is hard for me to say because yeah. of course you people are listening may not realize maybe that me and dj are both white but we're gonna be we're, talking about we're white yeah uh attitudes towards black people in teen wolf yeah and i was thinking while i was driving i was thinking there was only one black person that i remember in teen wolf and the only scene is when uh, it's a fellow student at at the high school, yeah. and Michael J. Fox starts dancing with the black guy who's really good at dancing, as mm. black guys in eighties movies would be. Yeah, um, and I was like, "That's weird. It's so weird that they relied on this, you know, stereotype uh, for black people." And then the Teen Wolf can also dance for some real reason. Yeah, and I was like, "That's it." Uh, yeah, this is not just you. Apparently, there's a theory out there. Uh, Dan on Facebook brought brought this up uh, that this is apparently a thing with Teen Wolf, and as an oblivious Caucasian boy growing up in uh, the uh, middle class <laughs> suburbs of the Midwest, I right this in went, Ohio, the suburbs of America, right? <laughs> this went straight over my head, so I had never until you you brought it well, up. Well, I think your friend actually put it best, which was it's a white fantasy of what it's like to be black. It's not an actual right. true to life oh, idea yeah. of what it's like to be black. So the the he a becomes cartoonish, a werewolf, yeah. Right. He becomes a werewolf, and suddenly he's good at basketball, he's good at dancing, girls want to be with him, um, but not in any relationship way. There's like a hyper-sexualized vision of him. Um, And what I thought was interesting about this interpretation is that... um, it's only when the entire high school is with him. They like him when he's, you know, helping their basketball team, dancing, when he's dancing yeah. and having fun and sort of a party animal, literal party animal. <laughs> in this case, yeah. Um, but in, when he gets angry and actually gets into a fight with, an, with another student, yeah. then the entire class... And defending class, himself. Like, sure. But the t- yeah. entire class turns against him, and it's like, oh, you're just an angry werewolf. Mm. Which I thought was an interesting take on it, which was yeah. that, oh, we like you when you fulfill these stereotypes of werewolves right. <laughs> but when but when you are angry and stand up for yourself then we're scared of you and want to right. you know get you away from us as far as possible and it just hit me like a ton of bricks when i just thought of that one scene uh, think, which is a throwaway scene in a montage i was like <gasps> it's all about race do you think that it is all about race do you think that was an intentional well that's my question is like is is there's way three ways I think this can go that the movie yeah. is aware of what it's doing yeah and it's it's trying to make a commentary on being black in America in an awkward yeah. weird way yeah. or it's not aware and sort of relying on sort of racist tropes about you know hyper athleticism of black people and hyper sexualization sexualization of black people and that it's just using that for a metaphor about werewolves for some reason yeah or the movie is completely unaware is just like what if we had him be a werewolf that i feel like that's where the the last thing you said the the what if he was a werewolf right. and what if that werewolf was good at basketball <laughs> Like, and wore sunglasses. That's sometime. where. That's what I want to. Th- that's what I want to think. That's when I'm like, well, of course that was it. It's a dumb '80s movie about a teen that turns into a werewolf. But I think that can also be my na- naivete sometimes. Of like, I would like to think that I wouldn't, you know, like right. deliberately pigeonhole an entire race because of that thing because i don't think of myself as racist but there's all right. kinds of underlying undercurrents of of that kind of thing going on right and you try to just be aware of that more and more with each passing day of like how you're kind of putting people in these boxes just sure. by your normal everyday behavior where you're not doing it on purpose but that doesn't really absolve you of kind of 
not doing those things. You know what I mean? Of like that is wearing. privilege in a nutshell. Exactly. Yeah. Pretty much. Um, you have non werewolf privilege. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I think I really do think it's probably the second one where uh, they're sort of relying on these racist tropes about black people. They're good at sports and they're good. You know, they're sexual, more sexual than white people, or mm. these sort of tropes, and they sort of couch it in this werewolf thing. I don't even know if it's that conscious of a thing, right. but I think it's there and it's yeah. conscious enough that I'm like, it's probably there. I'm not saying the whole movie is racist, but there's this sort of racist undercurrent, but it is interesting. They almost stumble upon this awareness when the thing that turns the people against him is when he stands up for himself and yeah. tries to, you know, well, he, the, the fight starts because he, uh, slept with another guy's girlfriend True. or you yeah. know, on and off girlfriend. And so that right. guy is like, get this werewolf out of here. Yeah. And not going guy... to his girlfriend and saying, Hey, right, right. remember when you totally consensually <laughs> and aggressively <laughs> pursued, went after, this, pursued man? this man? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Which also goes back to a lot of, you know, racist tropes about black people as well. Yeah. Um, so hide, I think there is, <laughs> right. Exactly. So, um, I think there is this like, oh, well, black people are good at basketball. Black people are, you know, uh, good at dancing. And then there's, but they they almost stumble upon this aware moment where yeah. it's like, oh, he became angry and the entire town turned against him. Does this change your verdict on the movie? What was my verdict? Couldn't tell you. I think I was like, hey, it's fine. Yeah. I think I did say people were an idiot. I think this actually... Uh, whether it's true in the terms of in terms of like people intended this message, or whether it's uh, they true, stumbled upon this. Yeah, message. whether they stumbled upon, or whether it's not true at all, and mm-hmm. they were just innocently were like werewolves can play basketball. Uh, it does make a rewatching more interesting, probably. So it makes me almost not quite because it was recent enough, but <laughs> it makes me almost want to watch it again with sort of that the wool off of my eyes of being like is this really about that and see if I can catch anything else? Probably not. Uh, also being a privileged white person, like I'm going to be like, ah, no, it looks, seems fine. Right. You know, cause it's, you can't really change. Well, it's, like, can... it's also a movie aimed at white people. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Aren't they all? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler Perry would tell you. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is our first installment of uh, our, our mini show uh, where we, Wanted to talk about something else, about some uh, uh, race topics. in Teen Wolf. They may not always be this heavy, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I uh, hope you like it. We'll see you next time.